Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Martyr has released a big update that has added the very first season that takes some inspiration from how leagues and seasons work in Path of Exile and Diablo 3, adding a temporary game mode with a fresh start in economy and characters, allowing you to earn rewards through various achievements during the season, and a leaderboard allowing you to compete with everybody else on an equal footing. I'm really excited about this, I've always wished that more games would use this system. It's such a great tool to add replayability and competitiveness to a normally single player game. Especially with the way Neocore has handled it for this game, adding a decent amount of new content and mechanics specific to this league with many cosmetics, season only items, and seasonal passive buffs for both you and the enemies. The theme for this first season is Inferno. Every character in this season will have a 5% chance to apply this new Inferno debuff to enemies on single target hits. This debuff simply deals 50% of your weapon's damage over 5 seconds. You get an extra 4% chance to apply this debuff for each tier of challenges that you complete, up to a total of 25% chance to apply Inferno on hit. Enemies in this season also have a 15% chance to explode on death dealing 30% of their max HP up front and another 30% over 3 seconds in an area. When you kill enemies ignited by Inferno, or any exploding enemies, you will gain a stack of this Blaze of Glory buff, giving you 2% movement speed, 5 heat resist, and 10 HP regen up to 5 times. Once you get later into the game and you have your chances of applying Inferno increased and maybe some extra items that can apply more Inferno, you'll be getting this buff up a lot. And like 10% movement speed from getting full stacks of this is actually pretty nice, it makes the game feel much smoother. You won't really be noticing the Inferno debuff at first, but as you progress through the season you'll not only have a vastly increased chance of applying this debuff, but you'll also be rewarded with a few different unique season only items that will heavily synergize with Inferno. Two examples of such items are the Scorching Eye or Remain Implant that has a chance of giving you an Enrage token whenever you apply Inferno, and Bone Serer, making you deal extra damage against enemies infected by Inferno. On top of these new unique items, there are also some seasonal relic and chants you can now roll onto your items. Like Hellraiser allowing your constructs to apply Inferno on hit, and Fiery Wrath giving extra damage to enemies affected by Inferno. Another new limited item available in this season is the Inferno Shard in 5 different tiers. This is another Archaeotech Shard you can implant into your items as normal. It has some pretty powerful percentage based heat scaling, getting up to 10% heat resist in armor, 15% heat damage in weapons, and 15% heat reflect in anything else. Those numbers are actually quite large and nothing to scoff at. Every tier of season objectives really reward you with its respective tier of Inferno Shard, and after unlocking that shard, that tier will start dropping from normal sources, just like any other shard would. Those are the tangible items that you'll be able to earn in this season, at least the ones shown in the compendium. They say there are several different items available, so there's surely much more for you to discover. At the end of this season, your seasonal characters will be transferred to the normal game and keep all of these items. I'm not sure if they're going to make these items available later to people who missed this season, or if they'll just keep them as unique legacy items that you'll no longer be able to get unless you trade for them. It will be very interesting to see how these items affect the base games, especially when we're looking at the future seasons and what items they might be adding, and how they'll interact with this season's items. You'll also be earning quite a few cosmetic rewards for completing seasonal objectives. A big new feature being this trophy desk in your command bridge where you can show off your seasonal trophies. Beyond that, you can earn several different portrait frames to show off. The rest of the rewards from these objectives are a discount from vendors up to 30%, large amounts of fate and favor, and item caches that have a bunch of items, including these brand new season only unique items. Some of the challenges of these seasonal objectives are pretty interesting. They definitely thought a lot harder about this than they needed to. There are a few simple grind challenges that you'd expect, but there are a lot more interesting challenges. Let me give you a few examples. The first tier of objectives are very simple and easy, things that anybody and their grandma can do. Reach level 20, equip a relic item, complete an intel mission, stuff like that. The only annoying thing here is the visit the Keeper of the Forge challenge that requires you to wait until the weekend for him to spawn, effectively time gaining your progression, which sucks. The second tier starts getting into Void Crusades, the main endgame mechanic of this game. If you're having trouble collecting your first set of Void Shards, make sure you're using the Treachery Tarot card in every mission that you can. 
Once you collect 5 of any of the shards, sustaining the shards becomes extremely easy. These challenges are pretty simple, just requiring you to simply complete a Void Crusade, hunt down a Wandering Servo Skull in a Void Crusade, and several other simple grinding challenges like collecting 500 Fade or completing 3 challenges. On the topic of Void Crusades, I haven't actually played since they added all of these new, different ones. Back when the only available one was Ivory, the idea was neat, but it got old really quick. Now there are 7 different Void Crusades, each one feels like its own unique adventure. It's super fun. The Keeper of the Forge returns in Tier 2, now needing you to turn in 300 Cortex Fragments, once again time getting your progression until the weekend. Tier 3 goes deeper into the endgame, mainly in crafting with challenges like maxing out the check tree, applying psalm codes or shards to your gear. This is where the Void Crusade challenges start getting interesting, with one challenge requiring you to complete a Void Crusade with all info fragments in 60 minutes or less. The final challenge involves you equipping a unique avatar frame, which requires you to either buy one from the Keeper of the Forge, or to get them from Tier 2, which requires you to visit the Keeper of the Forge. Once again, time gating you until the weekend, or multiple weekends if you didn't have enough time to collect 300 Cortex Fragments. This time gating thing really bothers me. I can understand a free to play game with microtransactions wanting their players to come back every week like this, but in a full priced game with only DLCs and expansions as extra monetization, it just seems to me like a massive design flaw. It's super frustrating, I hope that next season won't feature any challenges like this. The tier 4 Grandmaster challenges are where things start to get pretty tough, but still obtainable for the average player. You'll have to complete a Void Crusade in Hardcore mode, collect 10 million credits, equip a minimum of 5 Archaeotech relics, and buying a summon from the Keeper of the Forge, once again time gating you until the weekend. Tier 5, Heroic, is where things get very difficult. This tier seems to cater to the hardcore players that want to push this game to its limit. You'll have to reach level 100, 100% complete a Void Crusade in Hardcore mode, equip a minimum of 5 fully unlocked Ancient Relics, and the most interesting one in my opinion, complete a max level intel mission only wearing blue items. If you can complete all of these challenges, you'll be a god gamer, you'll be greatly rewarded with unique season only items that the average player can only dream of having, which is always a nice feeling. I like this season a lot. It took the formula that they know works from other popular action RPGs and put their own interesting spin on it. I think it's really interesting that your character actually grows in power as it completes the objectives, having a higher chance to apply Inferno and then gaining many items that make this Inferno buff more powerful. The main draw to this season definitely seems to be with the new unique items. Who knows, if trading ever becomes a big thing in this game, maybe these items will be the rarest of the rare legacy items one day. Thank you for watching this video, I hope it was able to help or explain any confusion you might have had with this new update. I'll leave a link to the compendium that has a lot of the information for this season in the description for you to come back to whenever you need. Also, if you're looking for a Cabal, consider joining Funny Cabal. It's quite small right now, but I would love to look deeper into what Cabals can offer and maybe even make a video on whether or not the Cabals are worth it for the time investment. So as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.